In the nation where the Electro Mitsudomo reigned supreme, there was once an encounter that washed away the dreams of a proud nation. A long time ago, Orobashi no Mikoto's sudden attack on Yashiori was an act of fulfilling a promise to his people. In the eyes of Otatsumi, this was a sign of strength shown by their savior god. But in the eyes of the shogunate, this was an apparent sign of treachery. The Arkan War was a period that has a lot of vague details and some questionable acts about the gods that participated in it. It is arguably one of the most fascinating events that happened in Tevat's history. When we look into it, some say that it began when Celestia first opened up seven divine seats, wherein each nation had to have the strongest god emerge so that they could be chosen and would be the ones to ascend to these seats. This prompted many gods, even those who were respected in their own right, to give up their philosophies and waged war against others. Whether this is true or not, it shows the grim intentions of Celestia and their heavenly principles. So in this video, I will be discussing the events of the Arkan War in the nation of Inazuma. For a long time, Orobashi's invasion of Yashiori was a question that we didn't have a clear answer for. But now with the release of new books in the 2.2 patch, it seems that we finally got to see some of his nation's history. However, this can still be biased, as one of the authors who wrote this book is a Sumeru scholar and was written two years before the Civil War of Inazuma. It is important to note that maybe not all the details are true. Now to start, let us first begin with Watatsumi's known origins and how Orobashi became a benevolent god who is worshipped even today. When the Arkan War was nearing its end, there lived an ancient dragon-like serpent god named Orobashi no Mikoto. This serpent had a body covered with jade branches and corals that carried some of his powers. One source states that Orobashi fled from the Arkan War because he wanted to avoid this notion. To fight others just for a spot among the heavens is something that he didn't dream of. However, this was just speculation written by the author. Another source states that Orobashi was said to have lost everything during the Arkan War, then fled into the Dark Sea. It is unclear what this everything means. Maybe Orobashi once had his own civilization or a territory before the Arkan War began and was defeated by another god stronger than him. It is unknown if Orobashi came from Inazuma or from other areas in Tevat. Assuming that he came from the west, and into the Dark Sea. Maybe he was from a region that is located south of Lia and on the northwest of Inazuma. While he was fleeing, he entered the Dark Sea and would soon discover an underwater nation known as Byakuya no Kuni. A quick rundown of this nation is that it is found in the Dark Sea and is terrorized by the dragon air of the depths. According to the Jade Branch, those who lived in this nation were described as abandoned so as a way to live, its people relied on the light of Ohirome no Omikashi for an untold amount of years until Orobashi arrived and defeated the dragon heir of the depths. One thing that is quite misunderstood here is that soon after the dragon heir's defeat, Orobashi sealed it underwater using his jade corals and did not kill it. This is similar to how Zhang Li also sealed Ejda. As of now, we have no additional info about this Ohiromi no Omikashi or a clear visual of what this dragoner could look like. Same to those other dragons we encountered in Tevat, like Chi from Lia and Durin from Dragonspine. Hopefully we get to know more about these beings, or even better, get to see them in action. Back to the topic, as the people rose from the ocean depths, Orobashi broke off the corals from his body and it became their new home. They named it Sanganomiya and renamed their old home Byakuya no Kuni and Kanomiya. They also built a shrine and made the Goshu Rocks, which are the five nodes of the barrier that separates Sanganomiya and Enkanomiya. These Goshu Rocks are in five different locations, namely the eye, tooth, fin, tail, and heart. If you look closely, 
This is because Sangnomiya Island is said to be shaped like a fish. Among those people who Orobashi rose from the ocean were the Yuna clan. This clan was one of the great houses and is still known today for their traditional talent in whale songs and their closeness with all marine life. Some notable figures from this clan were the twin sisters, Moon and Ayame. Moon was a shrine maiden who started at a young age, and Ayame was a female diver who made a living through collecting pearls. This Ayame was later known as Umigozen and owned a mansion that we can explore inside Sugetsu Pool. These twin sisters had different traits, where Moon is said to have a wise and gentle soul, while Ayame was very valiant and cheerful, where her power was sufficient to wrestle against fierce sea creatures. They were both different and paralleled their own personalities. During the twin sisters' lifetime, there lived another historical figure named Tozano. At first, his name was not Tozano because he was an orphan and had no name. It was only later, when Orobashi accepted him and gave him a position at his vanguard, that he was given the name Tozano. In his early life, Tozano was apprenticed by the twin sisters, learning from them the whale songs and rites of Atatsumi. When he had finally grown into a man, Moon invited him for a night swim under the moonlight. Tozano enjoyed his time with Moon, as he would hear her gentle whisper across the waves. The following morning, Tozano was motivated and began to fully understand the sword arts known as Getsumun and Yushio. These techniques are said to be taught among the warriors of Otatsumi and exist until today. Because of how he mastered these sword styles, Tozano was undefeated in a fight. As time passed, the people of Otatsumi became discontent with their home and soon asked Orobashi for a land more fertile and had great spaces for them to live. They suffered from hunger and disease because of the effects of holy soil, a condition where their land is bleached, making it infertile. This phenomenon is said to be due to absorption of the spirit of a Tatsumi island by Byakuya no Kuni or Enkanomiya. If it sinks all the way to the bottom, then Watatsumi will become a desert. So they set their sights on the east, where the lands are larger and had soil that is suitable for growing crops and supplies for trade. However, the people of Narukami already dominated these eastern islands, possessing great strength in war, and defeated those gods who were a threat to them during the Arkan War. Orobashi's response to this was silence. Maybe this was because he and the Electro Archon Makoto had an agreement that they would remain in the east to give respect to Makoto's rule. Because Watatsumi Island was not originally part of Inazuma, this could be the case as to how these two gods coincided with each other. It is plausible that at the time Makoto was acknowledged as the winner in her region, Watatsumi may not even have existed yet. After she was recognized as the Electro Archon, this was when Orobashi came and built this extra island for the people he raised from the Dark Sea a territory and a god that was obviously not accounted for. Adding to the fact that Makoto was not one for battle and hated violence, still, the people of Otatsumi were persistent and kept asking Orobashi. At last, Orobashi was moved by their words and prepared for an expedition to the east. Even though Orobashi was worried that he was no match for the strength of the shogunate, he still wanted to fulfill this promise to his people. So Sangonomiya built their first navy and entrusted it to Moon and Ayame. This was also the beginning of Moon's association with the giant whale named Daikengyo. Daikengyo was a huge blind whale and had 50 narwhals on its left flank and 50 humpback whales as bodyguards. This huge whale was later tamed by Moon and would join Watatsumi on their eastern expedition. Tozano the famed general of Orobashi also joined this expedition and was assigned to the vanguard. Before he set out, he made a final wish upon their shrine. As he says, One day, I shall set myself above Mount Yogo, overlooking the palace of the Lord of Thunder. I will have a joyful showdown against the legendary great Tengu of Yogo upon the roof of Tenchukaku and then I'll bring that Tengu's mask back to Ayame and Moon as a souvenir. 
With their ships ready, their armies fully equipped, and their farewell said, Orobashi, Moon, Ayame, Tozano, and the Watatsumi army raised their sails and followed the winds eastward. As the rest of the people who stayed in Watatsumi Island watched their ships move far into the horizon, they all assumed victory, but they did not expect that it would be the last they saw of them, and that this series of events would change the fate of the region forever. As the sea waves can be heard across the night, closing ships of Watatsumi, led by their deity, Orobashi, are bent on conquest. As dawn breaks, they spot a site of land beyond, which is known to the people of Narukami as Yashiori Island. If we were to imagine the situation, one shogunate soldier standing across the beaches caught sight of tiny black figures on the edge of the sea. These figures instantly became clearer and were instead ships filled with armed soldiers that were vying for victory. As the shogunate soldiers in Yashiori stood guard to defend against the invading army, they were no match for their superior strength. They lacked the time to prepare and were caught by surprise. This made the landing of Orobashi's army successful and shortly continued their invasion as they marched on to the rest of the island. The first moves in the war between Watatsumi and Narukami were now made, and it's time for Makoto and A to make their move. When news of the attack arrived at Tenchukaku, most of the guards were shocked. This impending invasion caught the sisters by surprise, and so they instantly mustered their own troops to protect their lands. Unfortunately, at that time, Makoto was preoccupied with various domestic matters within the island, so instead, her Kagemusha, A, assumed her identity and was the one who led her troops to battle, together with her own famed lieutenant, Sasayuri, the great Tengo of Yogo. During this period, Rito wasn't yet established, so it is unknown where the shogunate used to dock their ships. In the meantime, let us assume that they sent supplies to their docks at that time, and the troops would board their ships. Though details of this war are unknown, we can only assume that Orobashi's forces had already taken some parts of Yashiori and began establishing fortifications to prepare for a counterattack. However, they did not expect that A and Sasayori's forces would arrive much sooner. During Narukami's landing, they first secured the beaches and established a foothold. Having been tired from the journey here, they first rested for the night, but ordered some guards to keep watch. Finally, dawn breaks and the army marches from their camp into the inner parts of Yashiori. By the time they caught up with Tozano and the twin sisters' armies, Watatsumi had already managed to secure their positions and thus gained an advantage. Their army formations are unknown, and it is unclear how many weapon types they use in the world of Tevat. However, let us assume that they placed their spearmen in front and their archers at the back with Tozeno's command and their swordsmen in the left and right flanks commanded by each of the twin sisters. On the Narukami side, Sasayori commanded his troops to advance, but they noticed that her god wasn't present and so they were cautious in their approach. Unnoticingly, Orobashi rose from the seas and tried to ambush their rear. But A was quick to see this and met the Great Serpent in his attack. As the battle commences, A summons her lightning and storms in an attempt to scare Orobashi's forces and destroy some of the fortifications they built. A demonstrated her famous art of polearm and sword combat, but Orobashi would counter it with his sharp fangs and the use of his massive body. The battle was intense and brutal, and no side was wavering. During this battle, Sasayuri and Tozano found themselves fighting each other face to face. Though Sasayuri was able to wound his enemy, Tozano's sword style was too powerful and finally killed the Tengu general. Some of his troops began to waver due to the loss of their general. Wasting no time, the Watatsumi troops took this advantage and tried to push their enemies back into their ships. Meanwhile, after seeing her lieutenant's mask shattered, 
and his still warm body hit the ground. A brings out her Tachi and unleashes her most powerful sword technique, the Musono Hitotachi at its maximum power. This caused an impending blast across the island that sliced it in half and also affected other parts of Inazuma. From the description of the weapon Akumaru, it was described that Tozuna stood tall with his deity and was also caught in the blast of lightning. In the end, the body of Orobashi was sliced and his famed general was reduced to ashes. On the right side of the battlefield, this news soon came to the rest of the Watatsumi forces. Moon retreated when she heard that Omikami and Tozano had been slain together. When she and her troops tried to go back to their ships, she was ambushed by Sasayori's subordinates and was herself slain together with Daikengi of the Mighty Whale and the remains captured by the Shogunate. As for her sister, the Omigozen, Ayame, she and her soldiers were surrounded by the Shogunate and made a valiant stand. However, with her strength, she managed to slip behind her enemies and disappeared into the blood-red ocean, never to be seen again. The remaining Watatsumi soldiers fled leaderless to their ships and returned back to Watatsumi. Days after, they sent envoys to announce their surrender. This marked the end of their dreams of conquest and soon recognized the Inazuma Shogunate as the legitimate ruler ever since. When the dust settled, things had not turned out as they might have hoped and lost their deity, their strongest warrior, and the twin sisters. As for A, she achieved victory, but at the cost of her soldiers' lives and her cherished Tengu general, Sasayori. Despite the sins and the transgression of the Watatsumi people, A still allowed them to continue worshipping Orobashi so that it might enjoy their offerings. After the war, many among the Watatsumi people now no longer believe that their guiding Omikami has any chance of revival. But their pride as Watatsumi's people, the pain of watching the body of their god carved up for minerals by their overlord, the hurting of losing that god, these emotions have passed on from generation to generation, becoming the pillars of forbearance, resistance, and sacrifice that underpin the faith of Watatsumi's people. The name of their famous general, Tozano, was also stained in the writings of history, as his kingly name was forgotten, only to be replaced by the description by which the shogunate knew of him. He was depicted as this savage, demonic invader of Yashiori Island, and his reputation was now stained. These hatreds and humiliations, born and nursed over hundreds and thousands of years, would soon act as an inspiration for the rebellion against the same person who killed their Omikami in the future. As for Narukami's case, it also brought great suffering to their people, and most especially to A, for she had lost a friend dear to hers and would affect her emotions in her upcoming days. The people of Otatsumi have suffered a lot in their existence as a nation. For a long period of time, they were terrorized and only relied on light to survive. When the time came that they were saved, they were given a new home and the sights of both sun and moon. However, this new home suffered from holy soil, where their land was bleached, making it fertile and impossible for food to grow. So they sought new lands to ensure their survival. However, what lands they tried to take was already owned by a power much greater than theirs. Still, they hoped for their god to fulfill his promise and take them to new horizons. Then the news of Orobashi's death crushed their dreams and would forever stain the reputation as a people. This is the sad tale of Watatsumi Island and how a nation that dreamt of new waters to live in were now stuck to their curse. Now one interesting thing that the author mentioned in the preliminary study of Sangonomi of Folk Belief is that because Orobashi escaped his fate from the Archon War, this was considered as a grave sin. So, as a retribution, it was the heavens that ordered Orobashi to participate nevertheless. 
Another thing is that there were very reliable chronicles ordered to be sealed in Enkanomiya by Orobashi, never to be retrieved. It isn't clear why this is, but surely this will shed some light into Inazuma's timeline and the past of Byakuya no Kuni. If we ever get to see Enkanomiya in the future, finding these books will certainly be useful. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video about the truth behind Orobashi's attack. Reading those books was pretty shocking, and it gave us some new information into Orobashi's intentions. It will be pretty exciting when we get to explore the underwater depths of Enkanomiya anytime soon. Maybe we will get to see how the ancestors of Watatsumi managed to live there. Now, if you have some thoughts about the video, as well as suggestions for future ideas, leave a comment and let us know. Thank you very much for watching, and if you think it deserves one, give this video a like. Once again, my name is Clementine, and as usual, until the next one, be safe and stay tuned.